An innovative electric vehicle startup suddenly appears, claiming to be the one to change the car business forever. But as fast as it reached popularity, it slipped into invisibility, confusing consumers and investors. So, have you ever thought why so many promising EV companies seem to crash like this and burn faster than Tesla in a ludicrous mode? In this video, we will explain why so many EV companies fail and why so many EV dreams come crashing down. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to the channel first. Everyone's talking about electric cars, right? But despite all the buzz, there's a hiccup in the EV world. Sales might be slowing down, but the experts are still betting big on electric rides. They predict that by 2035, 61% of new cars will be electric. That's a significant jump from the measly 2.4% back in 2019. For startups, big markets are like gold mines. Suppose you're at a venture capital pitch, slide number one. And guess what? It's not just about cars. We're talking buses, trucks, motorcycles, and even, down the line, aircraft. Investment in EVs has doubled in just two years, hitting a whopping $616 billion by 2027. This level of excitement rings a bell. It propelled Tesla to fame as the first major EV player outside Asia. One key driver behind this growth? Government policies. Countries are eager to cut emissions, dangling incentives, subsidies, and other goodies to make going green more affordable. Since 2021, Tesla has bagged over $5 billion in zero-emission vehicle credits, which other automakers must buy to offset their fossil fuel sales. Let's discuss China, a real speed demon in the EV race. Their electric vehicle market has taken off like a rocket, thanks in no small part to supportive government policies. There have been some notable stumbles when we talk about growth and potential. Take Apple, for instance, a tech giant with pockets deeper than the Mariana Trench. They pumped the brakes on their car project, codenamed Titan, deciding it wasn't worth the ride. Then there's Dyson, the British powerhouse famous for revolutionizing vacuum cleaners. They took a stab at electric cars, but soon threw in the towel, realizing the road to profit wasn't as smooth as they'd hoped. It's telling. Getting a car from concept to the streets is no walk in the park. It's like juggling engineering brilliance with design flair while walking a tightrope. You've got to lock down manufacturing space, wrangle suppliers, and dance through a maze of regulations, all before you even think about hitting the accelerator. Even if you're starting with a leg up, like having a blank canvas of possibilities, you're still in for a wild ride. You'll need to master the same tough lessons as the big dogs in the industry. That means getting your hands dirty with design, building a rock-solid supply chain, and learning the art of production. Let's not forget about selling the darn thing and then dealing with repairs, maintenance, and all that jazz. But it all boils down to one thing, money. Without a hefty dose of capital, you're stuck spinning your wheels. And forget about the stock prices momentarily and focus on the real deal, capital returns. The numbers aren't all that impressive when you peek under the hood. This industry is like a heavyweight boxing match. It chews up cash like nobody's business. For big players like Ford and GM, their returns on invested capital have been stuck in the mid to low double digits for over a decade. And as for Tesla, let's just say they've been running on fumes in that department. Let's keep it plain and straightforward. Companies hit a brick wall when the money runs dry. Just ask Fisker. They hit a classic cash crunch faster than you can say, electric car. Sure, part of it comes with the territory of being in the auto game, but let's not overlook the blunders companies make along the way. And that's just scratching the surface. In this game, you must be like a shark. Keep moving or toast. It's not just about scoring that initial investment. You need to focus on the next $2 billion and the one after that. Look at Rivian and Lucid. They've burned through a cool $10 billion each. Now, consider these smaller startups with their $1 billion or $2 billion. They might think they've hit the jackpot, but they're barely even revving their engines. This issue hit home for many startups that went public through exceptional purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs. A SPAC is like a blank check company that teams up with a private business, like an EV firm. The private company gets a ticket to the big leagues through this marriage. Let's get honest. No venture capital firm will slap down billion dollar bills for an EV startup. So, if you're gunning for that kind of cash, your best bet is to take the public plunge. Running out of capital is the auto industry's Achilles heel. It's like trying to drive on an empty tank. It's just not working. And let's be honest, not everyone has a spare $2 billion to kickstart their car dreams. 
Even if you do, it's no guarantee of success. For EV startups, jumping on the SPAC train offered a few perks over the traditional IPO route. One biggie? You could hit the public market based on projected revenue, rather than waiting to show the cash in hand. The SPAC pitch sounded sweet. Tap into the markets for the funds needed to scale up, but reality didn't quite match the hype. It's not like everyday investors were throwing stacks of cash at Tesla from the get-go. Heavy hitters like Daimler stepped up with the big bucks when Tesla needed a boost and a hefty dose of debt and other financing tricks. Let's face it, companies still in the pre-revenue phase probably shouldn't be playing in the public sandbox. Staying afloat in those early days, especially without revenue rolling in, is like trying to outrun a tsunami. And convincing people to pour billions more into a startup? That's a challenging feat. Now, let's talk business. Where does all that cash flow go? Suppose looking at about $500 million to $1 billion to set up shop and gear up production. Add another $200 million to half a billion for supplier tools. And toss in another $250 million to $500 million for cooking up your product. It's a hefty tab, but nobody said breaking into the automotive game was cheap. When building and running a factory, there are some costs you just can't dodge. Once that factory's ready, you must churn out several vehicles to cover those fixed expenses. The parts supplier says, I've dropped $50 million to crank 200,000 vehicles. You're only asking for 20,000. Pay up or no parts for you. It's a tough pill to swallow, but that's the deal. Then there are the ongoing costs, keeping the lights on, the machines humming, and the team paying. You're considering shelling out $100 to $200 million yearly to keep the factory wheels turning while gearing up for production. But once you've got those wheels rolling, you're not out of the woods yet. You'll need more cash to fuel that growth, launching a new vehicle, or setting up another plant to crank more cars. And here's where companies take different paths. Some go all in with vertical integration, doing as much as they can in-house. Others outsource, handing off some or most of the work to external partners. Then, some kick things off with a donor vehicle, repurposing parts from existing manufacturers. Lordstown started with a donor body for its endurance pickup truck, while Elms began with a Chinese van. It's all about finding the right fit for your ride. The asset light approach, favored by companies like Fisker, leans on outsiders, suppliers, or contract manufacturers to bring your designs to life. It might seem like a money saver to let an experienced firm handle the car making in a factory already up and running, but costs can sneak up on you. Mark Wakefield from Alex Partners points out that turning a design into a rolling vehicle can take up to four times longer than expected. Designing a car is never a one and done deal. It's a constant cycle of tweaks and adjustments. While electric vehicles sidestep emissions regulations, they still have to play ball with many other rules, especially the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, FMVSS. These standards are no joke. They're designed to keep people safe on the road. And it's not just about safety. A car must be smooth sailing. That means tackling challenges like noise, vibration, and harshness, NVH, ensuring every component fits together seamlessly to deliver a comfortable ride. This tension between innovation and tradition is the name of the game for any EV startup or any auto startup. Playing it safe might save you a buck or two, but without that spark of innovation, you risk fading into obscurity. Now let's fast forward to today. EV demand isn't exactly booming, with Tesla missing delivery targets and shares taking a tumble. But there are glimmers of hope. Rivian's first quarter deliveries exceeded expectations. It's a familiar tale, echoing the early days of the auto industry when hundreds of small players jostled for a slice of the pie. In the end, only a handful survived to become the big shots we know today. GM, Ford, and the remnants of Chrysler, now part of Stellantis. That's all for today's video. Let's sign off, but before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.